Hello students, welcome to HSC Biology and Module 5 on Heredity. This is also video number 5 and we're going to continue our little series on looking at reproduction in different groups of organisms, this time in bacteria. So as with previous uh, videos that we've started on in this particular module, this one does exactly the same sorts of things, but in this case we're going to be focusing on bacteria and particularly the process that bacteria use, which is binary fission. So at the end of this video, hopefully you uh, can identify a method by which bacteria reproduce, describe reproduction in bacteria by binary fission, and perhaps even evaluate the efficacy of bacterial reproduction. So in bacteria, there are no sexual stages. We only have uh, haploid cells, there's no cells that are actually going to uh, link together in any sort of sexual reproductive uh, act. So therefore, all of the cell division that's occurring is all mitotic division. That is uh, the process, been, and we haven't looked at this in a lot of detail yet in this part of the course, but we did look, look at mitosis as a process of cell division previously. So binary fission, binary just meaning two, and fission meaning split. So the purpose of binary fission is to sit, split the cell into two new cells. One of the things that makes this process much easier in bacteria is that gen the genetic material is greatly reduced. Often we're looking at something called a plasmid, a circular piece of DNA. The, the um, cells themselves are much simpler. They don't have all the complex organelles that we find in eukaryotic organisms. And so therefore, reproduction in bacteria is very rapid. It's very efficient. Um, mainly due to that lack of organelles and the smaller amounts of DNA. And it means the bacteria can reproduce very, very quickly. So this is fantastic for, uh, say, colonization. And also, of course, rapid population growth. These are the advantages of asexual reproduction, generally speaking, over sexual reproduction. You don't have the problem of trying to get the two uh, gametes together, trying to get the individuals to meet, to share those gametes, or to create a process where fertilization can happen. So bacterial reproduction, this is one of the reasons why bacteria have been so successful, despite the fact they're such simple organisms in many ways, they remain on the earth and they are incredibly numerous in um, their population sizes. And also, it has to be said, in diversity. And that's an interesting thing because that's slightly counter, I guess, in one way to what we consider with asexual reproduction. One of the main reasons that sexual reproduction is uh, a strategy that's adopted by so many organisms is because it increases variation in the population. And it provides that raw material upon which natural selection can operate. So if that's not available, if all we have is mutation, then uh, asexual reproduction is not going to, you would think, be as successful in acting upon that. And yet this is uh, the only source of variation that can occur in bacteria is through reproduction or, or uh, through mutation or incorrect copying of the material that is going from one generation into the next. The advantages, of course, are some bacteria, uh, some, for example, E. coli, Escherichia coli, which live in the gut of many mammals, are capable of reproducing in around 20 minutes. So their cycles are very, very quick. There's also been some very important experiments that have been done using bacteria because of this um, very rapid rate of uh, evolution. And uh, w worth looking at are the experiments led by Linsky. Uh, who, because of, uh, over a very long-term project, have, have produced, uh, and I can't remember the exact number, but it's of around about 30,000 different generations in trying to look for, uh, I guess, examples of how evolution might occur in real time. And, of course, that is uh, something that can be done with organisms that reproduce rapidly that allow you to uh, continue to monitor them over long periods of time and maybe make some changes to their environment in order to see how the population uh, copes and deals with those changes. 
So just a quick picture here from the Pearson textbook. Um, it gives us a look at the process of division without all the complexity associated with mitosis, and we will look at that later on. But you can see here, the keys are the plasmid, this circular piece of DNA, which is within the cell. Outside of that, there's really just a cell wall, cytoplasm, a membrane that's keeping the uh, contents of the cell together. And you can see it's at that point, which is, is labeled the origin, um, where the division process begins, where that DNA needs to be copied precisely. And, um, and so therefore, two copies of it will be produced, and then the cell will uh, divide pretty much along that line. And being a bacterial cell, we'll also have perhaps formation of that cell wall around the cell membrane um, and uh, as the cell divides into two new organisms. This is really a function, as we've talked about before, about surface area to volume. As cells get too large, they become less efficient at exchanging material with the external environment. And because bacteria are very small, very simple organisms, they're going to do that very rapidly, and that's going to trigger this process of splitting and binary fission. So there's a few examples there, a few, um, I guess, reasons why bacteria undergo asexual reproduction through binary fission that actually makes them quite, in, in certainly population number size, a very successful group. Thanks for watching.